entering the Duat, continuation of the Egyptian myth, a guide to ancient gods and legends, Gary J. Shaw. Entering the Duat, I arrive at the island of the horizon dwellers. I go out from the holy gate. What is it? Is it the field of rushes which produces produce the provisions of the gods who are around the shine? As for that holy gate, is it the gate of the supports of Shu? Otherwise said, is it the gate of Dwat? Otherwise said, is it the door through which my father Atum passed when he proceeded to the eastern horizon of the sky? Book of the Dead, Spell 17. You close your eyes, you breathe your last breath. The world descends into darkness. Your heart stops beating. You open your eyes. You are no longer lying in bed, surrounded by weeping loved ones, but standing in a vast desert before a tall gateway. You are now in the Dwat, a word often translated as netherworld or underworld but which in reality referred to a place that was just as much a part of the created world as anywhere you might visit when alive. It was just simply out of reach of the living. From consulting your book of the dead, buried with you in your tomb during your funeral and are magically accessible you know this to be the start of an adventure. Rife with challenges, which could quite possibly end with your own second death. Your obliteration of existence. To the Egyptians, physical death was not true death, just a change of circumstances. True death occurred in the Dwat, at the hands of demons, or ordered by Osiris for those who had lived in unrighteous life. Despite the anxiety that the thought of this encounter with the great God might create, it was still a long way off. First of all, the many challenges that the Dwat had to be overcome before you could even come close to Osiris's judgment. And the Wat itself was not a place to linger. It was a miserable place. The Book of the Dead relates a desert with no water or air, deep, dark, and unsearchable, where there are where there was no love making. Traversing was the what might not particularly might not be particularly pleasant. It would surely be a brutal and a harrowing, har harrowing experience. But staying still wasn't much of an option. Only by facing its trials could you reach the judgment hall and having been assessed by the gods therein, be accepted as one of the glorious transfigured dead who appeared as divinities and were allowed free, free movement throughout the created world. How could you, how you then chose to spend eternity was entirely up to you. So you stand newly arrived beneath the holy gate on the island of the horizon's dwellers at the start of your long and dangerous journey. 
looking eastern, orientating yourself, you notice that the sky rests on top of a mountain. Your handy book of the dead, travel guide of the afterlife tells you this is the mountain of Baku. According to the text, the mountain is 300 rods long and 150 rods broad and so back. Lord of Baku lives on the eastern side of the mountain where he inhibits a temple made of carnelian. Wow, carnelian, very important. On top of the mountain snakes, on top of the mountains lives a snake called he who is in his burning 30 cubits long his first eight cubits are made of flints and his teeth gleam in fact this snake has a glare of powerful so powerful that it can stop the sun's god's sacred boat and can eventually swallow seven cubits of the sacred waters. Luckily, on such occasions, the book reassures you, Seth hurls an iron lance at the snake, causing him to vomit up all that he has swallowed. Seth then places the snake before him and says, get back at the sharp knife which is in my hand. I stand before you navigating a right and seeing afar. Given the book's description, you look towards the top of the mountain and decide it best to keep your distance. But where to go now? The Book of the Dead precedes some of the answers, citing keys and inhabitants and geographics features though never including a true map. Instead, it only presents the different locations, relations to one another, or the time taken to travel between them. Magic in the Dwat. As in life, you are so aided by magic in the Dwat. The Book of Spells enables you to assimilate the characters of the gods, providing you with divine authority, and thus the ability to repel enemies, stop yourself from being restrained, fight off purification, and even to save yourself from de decapitation, to ensure that you are fully stocked with magical ability the ferryman of the dead is sent out upon your arrival to sail upstream to the island of fire to collect magic from whenever it might be found, all for you to use. A map of the what? The book of two ways. Although not included in the book of the dead, Maps of the Duwat did not appear during the Middle Kingdom. They were painted on the sides of coffins and were part of compositions called the Book of Two Ways. This present, the sun god traveling from east to west. This presents the sun god traveling from east to west on a blue waterway and then passing along a dark path through the outer sky from west to east. Both ways were separated by the red lake of fire of the knife wilder. The map shows locations such as Thoth Mansion in the place of Mayat, a mansion of Osiris, structures and tall walls of flints or flames, waterways and shrines 
Some places were to be visited. Others were to be avoided throughout the land. Throughout the land was populated by nice welding demons who attempted to block the deceased progress. These demons had fearsome names, including Dogface, whose shape is big. He is hot, Longface, who drives off aggressors. And he who swallows, he who is alert, in the book of two ways the deceased uses magic to pass through demons and reach Rostal. Rostal. The necropolis, a place at the boundary of the sky where Osiris' corpse is locked in darkness and surrounded by fire. Here he finds a hall divided by three walls of fire and passes through them to reach past of confusion. The deceased then travels through thoughts and becomes identified with Re, sailing in his boat. After passing through usually seven gates, he reaches Osiris and offers him the Eye of Horus. The deceased now identified with Thoth then spends eternity watching Ray deliver a speech above his mighty deeds. How to find your way? Apparently it is enough to know the names of the the names and descriptions of the demons and locations of the Wat to make progress, especially as the gods and spirits themselves are meant to prepare a way through the dangerous terrains for you. With this knowledge, you can't be assured of reaching Osiris. Ooh, getting emotional, I don't even know why. Ooh. Okay. Knowing the names of dangerous traps is also helpful. Spells 153a and b of the Book of the Dead are illustrated with a giant net stretched between the sky and earth by fishermen who has happened to be earth gods and forefathers of the swallowers. In this net, they hope to catch you during their attempts to halt those unstable to enter the next life. By reciting the spell, you announce that you will not be caught like the inert ones or wanderers. You have power over the net because you know it constitutes parts and also its names all embracing. That's the picture. Self-catering in the Duat, in the spell 189, after repeating, stating what he will eat in the Duat, mainly four loaves from the house of Horus and three from the house of Thoth in the Duat, and adamantly not feces or urine, urine and especially where under the sycamore of Hathor, or under the branches of the the bait net frit tree. Uh, the disease is finally asked by the obscurely named one cannot count. You will you will live on someone else's goods every day, to which he replies that in addition to the above mentioned divinely provided supplies, he plunged the land in the field of reeds, quickly refluting, refluting the demons, thinly veiled insulation that he, an afterlife freeloader, that he's an afterlife freeloader, 
These fields that the seas relate are guarded by the twin children of the king of lower Egypt and plunged by the greatest of the gods of the sky and of the gods of the earth. What to drink, what to eat and drink. Certain spells also ensure that you do not restore to eating species, drinking urine, or walking with your head downwards with in duat. They can provide bread and other food that the gods live on. Bread of white emmer, or the bread of gep, and beer of red barley, of hoppy, in the pure place compromise the preferred menu in the duat to be eaten under the branches of the tree of Hathor, the day barkat and the night barkat of the god of the sun god also distributes bread and beer though if all else fails the seven cows and their bull provide daily servings of bread and beer Places of interest. Scanning the context of your book of the dead, you notice that the main features of the Duat are its gates, mounds, and caverns. And so you can set about trying to memorize their appearances and occupants. The Duat's geography is rather confusing to the newly departed Glancing at the first spell in the book, you might become concerned about the snake of Rastul, for example, who lived on the flesh of man and gulped down their blood. Luckily, the spell helps to ward off such snakes. Regarding Rastul itself, you quickly learn that its southern gate is at Narf and its northern gate is in the Mount of Osiris. Spell 17 adds that there is a lake of fire between Narif and the house of the entourage. The lake of fire burns sinners and purifies the righteous and is a feature of Egyptian afterlife geography since the time of the Old Kingdom. Its location, however, changes over time. In the New Kingdom, the Lake of Fire is typically depicted as a square or rectangular pool of water with a baboon at each side occupied by the hieroglyphic symbols for fire. In the Book of the Two Ways, it can be assessed by two gates, the Gates of Darkness and the Gates of Fire. Gates of Duat. Perhaps the most important feature of the Duat's landscapes are its gates because you must pass through them to reach Osiris. The Duat's landscapes consist of a number of subdivisions, like a city divided into sectors, each only accessible through one gate, like a palace or a temple which the further one passes along is access, the more restricted access becomes. The Duat gates are sometimes depicted as quite elaborate, decorated with aunts and jet signs and displacing hecker frenzies, rolls of upright bundle reeds used to decorate the upper part of walls and combettos, cornices, and outward covering, covering feature at the top of the wall. The number of gates differs depending on the spell according to spell 144 and 147. There are seven gates before Osiris is reached.
eats with a keeper, a guard, and a reporter. All fearsome demons armed with knives or the slightly less terrified ears of corn. Some are mum, mum, mummy form and animal headed. Others are purely animals. Arriving at the first gate of the watch, you are confronted by a keeper named he whose face is inverted, the many shaped. Besides him, you spot the guard called eavesdroppers, while the reporter is apparently called loud voice. After you have looked up each demon's name in the book of the dead and spoken it out loud, the gatekeeper declares you worthy to pass, letting you through to the next division of the Duat and the further obstacle beyond. If any of the keepers look less than impressed with you, spell 144 provides a long speech aiming to convince them of your worthiness. It urges you to point out, among other things, that you were born in Rastu, that you led the gods in the horizons in the entourage of Osiris, that you are a master of spirits, and that you carry the eye of horrors. Afterwards, if this still doesn't work, you can follow the spell's suggestion that you tell the keeper that your name is mightier than his and that you are one who raises up truth to Ray and who destroys the might of Apophis. I am one who opens my fire, my ferment, ferment, you should say, who strives off the storms, who makes the crow, the crew of Ray alive, and who rises up, offering the place where they are. On the other hand, if you go by spell 146, there are a lot more gates to get through. 21 in the house of Osiris in the fields of reeds, each manned by two demons, a female guardian and a male doorkeeper. The first you encounter is the mistress of trembling, lofty of battlements, Chief Atenas, mistress of destruction, one who foretells matters, who repels storms, and who rescues the robbed among those who come from afar. Rather a mouthful to pronounce when confronted by a terrifying and armed demonic creature. The doorkeeper, on the other hand, is scantily called terrible, which is a little easier to say under stress. Among the subsequent gate goddesses is the 18th guardian called hot of flames, destructive of heat, sharp of blade, swift of hands, who kills without warning, whom none pass by for fear of her pain. Her doorkeeper is called he who protects himself. Not surprising, surprising given the violent nature of his gate goddesses. Why so many different numbers of gates? In the Book of the Dead, we have met two different numbers of gates, either seven or 21. To make the matters more confusing, in the Book of Gates, one of the afterlife books carved into the walls of New Kingdom royal tombs, there are 12 gates, one for each hour of the night, 
again eat guarded by a demon. These inconsistencies are a result of the ancient Egyptians' unwillingness never to discard an old idea. Why remove a potentially correct spell when you can just cite all the alternatives? Mounds, whisk wandering in the Duat, one of the features of the landscapes that might catch your attention are its numerous mounds. Of the 14 mounds mentioned in spell 149, 11 are green and three are yellow. The first mount is green. There men live on shen loaves and jugs of beer. The god Ray Horaketi lives in the second mount, which is also green. The third mount, green again, is more sinister. This is the mount of spirits over which none travel. It consists it contains spirits and its flames is efficient for burning. The fourth mount is, you guessed it, green and has very high twin mountains. It is 300 rod long and 150 rod wide. A seven cubit long snake known as the caster of knives lives there and decapitates and eats the heads of spirits to survive. The fifth mount, green, is a mount of spirits which men do not pass. The spirits who are in it are seven cubits from their buttlock and they live on the shades of the inert ones. The seventh mount, green, is a cavern sacred to the gods, sacred from the spirits, and inaccessible to the dead. And it appears to be inhabited by an eel-like creature. The god who lives there is Feller of the Adu fish. If you climb this mount, you must visit the gods within. Prepare flat cakes. For them and use your magic to stop the feller of Aju fish from having power over you. The seventh mound, green, is the mountain of the Reki snake. This snake is seven cubits long and lives on spirits. He is for formidable formidable beast and you should fear his poison and bite the book usually suggests that you evoke the violet god Mafdet to cut off his head a god called High One of ha ha Tet lives in the eighth mound green and guards it so that none can come near. The ninth mount is yellow, surprised and cold. Ixley, Ixley town, and the eye reach captures. This town is said to be hidden from the gods, of which the spirits are afraid to learn the name from which none go in or out except that August God who is in his egg, the creator God, probably Ray Atum. I think that's the third eye, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know. It opens with fire and its breath is destruction to noses and mouth. The tenth mouth is called Plateau and is yellow. Despite its unassuming name, this is an unfrightening place where you must command the inhabitants to lie 
on their bellies until you have passed so that they cannot take your spirits or shade. The eleventh mouth is green and full of secrets. These are so secret, in fact, that the spirits don't come or go from it for fear of revealing what they see. The twelfth mount green is known as Mount of Winnet, which is in front of Rastel. The gods and the spirits cannot come near this mount for four cobras dwell there, each called destruction. The thirteenth mount is green and called he who opens his mouth a basin of water. No one has power over his mouth. Its water is fire, such that no one can drink from it, and its river is filled with papyrus. The final 14 mount called Mount of Kernraha is yellow. It's diverse in Nile and causes it to come laden with barley. The snake that belongs to it is in the cavern of Elephantine at the source of the Nile. Caverns, traveling through Duwat, you can also come across 12 caverns, each inhabited by multiple surprisingly helpful deities. These gods of the eight caverns are mysterious of shapes and breath and breathe air. Of them, there are those who follow Osiris, who grant that you be at rest with your mummy, as well as he who stands up, who allows you to worship Ray when he arises, and he who is hidden, who makes you strong in the hall of Gep, among many others. Sharem, for example, stops evil from coming close to you in the Duat. The gods of the tenth caverns are said to cry aloud and possess holy myster mysteries. Here, those who belong to the sunshine gives you light. In the other caverns, the god Iquet grants that you be in the presence of Re and that you cross the sky forever with him. Aquen, driv Aquen drives away all evil. The destroyer clears your vision so that you may see the sunshine God. And she, whose head is red, ensures that you have power over the waters.